Quick story. This is a story about somebody who was not so great at storytelling, who watched a live stream or a pre-recorded video, this one, and then was able to have confidence in the stories that they told, was able to relate to their audience more, even impress the people that they're speaking to, whether it's online, in a forum, maybe in a chat or on a presentation, a Zoom call, or in person at a party or at a housewarming gig or whatever the case may be. This is a story about you. I wanna help you get better at telling stories. I myself was terrible at it before. First of all, I didn't even realize how important this skill was. And when I finally started learning even just some basic frameworks about how to tell a great story, things started to change. More people started paying attention, my videos started getting more watch time, and I started getting more smiles on the other end. And that's what I'm here to provide for you. So make sure you stick around today because I'm gonna teach you some fun things about storytelling. I have some examples and even some frameworks to share with you from other YouTube videos I'm gonna play for you here. Just we'll kind of walk through it together and talk about it. And we'll have some fun making up some stories too so we can all get better together. Thank you so much. Episode 201, here we go. This is the Income Stream to help you achieve your dream All while we keep it clean This is the Income Stream It's the kind of show where you can come and go But then you leave inspired With no fee required The Income Stream with Pat Flynn Thank you all for yesterday Episode 200 was epic Big shout out to our special guest Roberto Blake Chris Ducker, and of course, none other than Grandma Goody, who blew me away, made me cry, made me laugh, made me smile, and it was such a great time. Thank you all for the support, and we're going to have a, uh, a fun time today. Bernard, we got Chris, we got uh, April in the house, we got Lisa Hawkins, we got Samson, Consult the Blind Guy, Peasant Uprising, Jameen, GTO, Dawn. Thank you so much, and again, make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, because I'm here for you. In fact, I'm leaning into video even more. I just got a burst of inspiration after yesterday to not only continue to go live every single day for you, but, and yes, we're gonna get to 365, and no, I'm not gonna shave my beard. I've already made that decision. I just asked the audience yesterday, should I shave my beard when we get to 365? And y'all shouted at me, so I'm not gonna do that. It's all good, you don't have to worry. Um, it's gonna come off at some point. I just don't know when. Uh, but anyway, also leaning into creating more packaged content in pre-recorded videos for you to answer just as many questions as I can. I am determined to get the subscriber numbers up and to help more people, right? It's actually, it should be reversed, to help more people and thus get the subscriber numbers up and even increase the revenue that I'm making here on YouTube so I can help more people, right? Not just through super chats and memberships here. And thank you if you are a member, you're always welcome to join, not required. You get some special things, emojis, community chat, pre-recorded uh, or pre-access to the videos that I have coming out. Um, I have another one today. In fact, I had a lot of questions yesterday about my video setup because I went live a couple times uh, the past few weeks on presentations. And on my presentations, as you likely know, I have now the ability to make it really dynamic. I can, even while doing a keynote type presentation, kind of go multi-cam and it impresses a lot of people. So I have a video coming out later today, a 21 minute video about the entire setup and how I do some fun things like the pattern interrupt. Gotcha. But today we're talking about storytelling. So again, thank you so much for yesterday and I appreciate you so much for your support and let's keep going here. So we're gonna talk about storytelling today. Why are stories important? I think inherently we kinda know why stories are important, but if we go back into history, if we go back to even cavemen, cave women times, back when there, was hard, there wasn't even really a spoken language other than grunting, there were still stories being told through cave paintings. I mean, stories are told to us when the moment we're born, even beforehand. I remember reading to Kaoni and Kai in April's belly before they came out uh, and joined us in this in this crazy world that we live in. Uh, stories, are, we, we are just fine-tuned as humans to react to, to pay attention to, to engage with stories. So stories are something that we just, as soon as we start hearing one that actually is relevant, uh, it, it triggers something in our brain to go, whoa, let's transport ourselves into that same situation. It could stop us from making a decision to leave a certain place. It could 
uh, inspire us. It can motivate us. It, it can educate us. And in fact, yesterday, Chris Ducker, when he came on, started talking about the power of story and the fact that we all have stories that we can tell. And I do have some strategies and things I want to share with you in terms of how to collect these stories, things I've shared before, but there's they're definitely worth mentioning again, creating our story bank and how that can help us moving forward. But I think more importantly, we need to understand the structure of a great story and what makes a story, in fact, relatable, right? Hold on, I'm just checking the chat here. All good. Grunting, bruh, right? Is that wide shot the Brio? Indeed, this wide shot right here. What's up, y'all? Great to see you here. And again, bruh. Big bruh. shout out to all y'all. Uh, I'm going to keep this up here for a while. Thanks to Grandma Goody, this, this wooden plaque that came in, in episode 100. But anyway, I want to share with you something that I share with my podcasting students. Whenever my podcasting students come to San Diego, and I have a couple ways I help people learn how to podcast. I have a course called Power Up Podcasting. I have a 201 course. Speaking of episode 201, I have a 201 podcasting course called Amped Up Podcasting. And when we could, I had brought people to San Diego at a higher price to come and workshop with me for a couple days to get their podcast started. And in each of those cases, I talk about the power and the importance of storytelling. And I share the same exact video with each of those groups. And it really makes a big impact. So I wanted to share it here with you today. And in fact, I wanted to kind of watch alongside with you as this TEDx video, which has 7 million views. Uh, it is right here and it's queued up for you. So what I'm gonna do is in fact, go to theater view and we can in fact watch this together. And so this is our time to sort of like sit back, pay attention really quick. This is Matthew Winkler talking about the hero's journey because this is something that I didn't even know was a story that I in fact was creating and we all have a story like this and we have the ability to pull out stories like this from our audience, which can help engage our audience more, help people who are perhaps on the fence understand that we have something uh, worth value to them, uh, and also help motivate our audience too. So let me hit play on this, and we'll watch this together. Love these TED little educational videos, by the way. What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Okay, so part one here is about this idea of the ordinary world versus the special world, this sort of transition between the two. And this is really important for us, especially as people who are telling stories to understand that a good story has some sort of thing that removes the person or the character from their normal place and takes them somewhere else, right? And of course, there's a whole cycle here and we'll walk you through each of these things. But think about it. Let's think about my story. I was once an architect working a nine to five job. In fact, it was my dream job. And then I got let go. I was challenged and then I was in a special world, a place that was different, full of challenges. So I was once somewhere else and then I got into a spot. And this, of course, example is my own hero's journey, just the start of it, of course, but it's something that was very relatable. And it was interesting because when I started telling my story, I didn't know how to tell the story back when I was invited onto podcasts or just sharing it on my blog. Um, it, I started to see it resonate with people. The more I dove into what it once was, the ordinary world, and then how much of a big change it was to go into the new uh, sort of segment, the new world, um, it really started to, uh, to, 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 to make an impact on people. It's, it uh, it's initially captured their attention much quicker versus if I were to just tell a story like, yeah, I used to be an architect and now here I am and this is what I do. If I dive more into the details of where I was, it makes the impact of the transition even stronger. So let's keep going here. Along the way, there are key events. Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? So as this pattern is being spoken about, what Matthew's going to do is take you into a little hero's journey example. I'm going to pause. 
give you time to sort of write or just at least pay attention to this. And then I'm going to share with you how my story exactly follows this. And I want you to consider your story and also the stories of people who are in your audience too. It's just as important, if, if in fact more important, to tell your audience's story, your students, your customers' story uh, more than your own. This is uh, Donald Miller and StoryBrand, how to use story to sell more of your stuff. It's putting the spotlight on your people, not just you, but your people. You are, in fact, an example of a hero's journey. Maybe you're in the middle of it. Maybe you haven't come all the way full circle yet. But either way, you can also consider the hero's journey that you're creating for others. And this is where we always talk about serving others first. You are helping a person or people on their own hero's journey, and you are the guide. And the guide comes in at a certain moment here. You'll see. But let's keep going here. And again, I'm going to be pausing along the way as we, as we go. Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. Okay, so status quo, I think you can see my video down here. Status quo, I was working a job at an architecture firm, loved what I was doing, was making money uh, for my 401k, was uh, getting married, all this good, like everything was good and secure. And then one o'clock, call to action. Now, call to actions mean there's something that triggers a moment where things are now starting to change, right? So for me, it was this idea of getting laid off. And for me, I really wanted to stay within this ordinary world. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. But my call to action was essentially forced upon me. For others, it is a choice that they make. It doesn't really matter. Whatever that moment is, is really important to sort of focus on. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge. Two o'clock, assistance. There's the guide. This is when the guide comes in. You can be the guide for others, but in your own journey, there's likely assistance coming from elsewhere. For me, when I got laid off and I got called to potentially start this world, this journey of online business, I found assistance in a podcast. And that podcast was called Internet Business Mastery. I talk about them all the time because they've had a massive impact in who I am and what I've done. So these guys, Jason and Jeremy, were hosts of Internet Business Mastery. This is also the origin story of my podcast because they changed my life so much that I wanted to change others' lives in the same way, hence the Smart Passive Income podcast, right? So they came to my assistance, not in sort of this manner and giving me uh, you know, a direct line of help, but they did give me tools. They did have a podcast and I also joined their academy to teach me this sort of stuff online. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. I guess they were a little bit older than me, but they were, they were definitely wiser, that's for sure. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. Not okay, so here I am, now trying to build my website, trying to figure out how to take this knowledge I had about an exam and put it online. Not knowing what I was getting into, it literally looked like me jumping into this dark cavern. And so now here we are in this brand new world. I came from a very secure nine to five job, got laid off, and here I am in this new world now. Not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Figures out how to build a website, understands the importance of branding, figures out how to escape my self-doubts. These are all traps, right? And these are all things that I talk about too when I tell my story. Five o'clock, approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. All right, so now I'm about ready to publish my first study guide and try to make any bit of money online not knowing what I'm doing. And I publish uh, my, my study guide, the uh, Green Exam Academy is the name of the website. The guide was called the Green Associates Exam. And this was, this was my big challenge. I was fighting the demons in my head about how in the world would people, why in the world would people buy from me all this self-doubt, all this resistance, right? Six o'clock, crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. So this is me right after launching my book, literally crying because I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I am checking my email every single minute to see, did I get a PayPal notification? No, I didn't. 
oh, this wasn't cut out for me. I should just go back and find an architecture job. In fact, I did send more resumes out even after starting my architecture business online because that's the world I knew. I was just like, oh, I shouldn't have gone down this route. Maybe this is what I should be uh, doing instead. And th my, my biggest challenge was actually putting myself out there and trying to make some money in that way. He faces death and possibly even dies. I didn't die, but I was very scared. Only to be reborn at seven o'clock. So I get some inspiration. I go back to the guys, my guides, and I ask them for help. I, in fact, now get an email from PayPal at 8.40 a.m. the next day. My first, my first dollar online. In fact, it was uh, $18 and some, some odd cents because of PayPal fees. It was a $19.99 ebook. I share that moment, and that was a triumphant moment. But those demons continued to start to, to dig at me, right? So it was almost like I was able to, to slay this creature a little bit, get a little dose of inspiration, but then the demons continued to start to come back. Treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition or power. So here I am now after a couple days of sales and realizing that, wow, there was actually a possibility of me getting into online business and having this work. I started to see even after the first month, the idea that I was making more money as a person doing online business, helping people pass the lead exam than I was in architecture. So I found this treasure. Now I found this, this thing opened up for me in this new world. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero? Or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? So again, those demons in my mind, is this even for me, like honestly for over a year, even after starting my online business, I had a lot of self doubts. I even shared my story a few times and people saying that it was just a flash in the pan, which didn't help. Demons can come from many places, from internal or external, right? But the business started to uh, stabilize a little bit. I started to notice that, I, that, that, that there, were, there were more possibilities for sure. Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock. So here I am now with a job, but now online, but it's different, Lock. as you'll see. New life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely, but let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? I volunteer as tribute. How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well, you're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek. And then do it all over again. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Uh, also, yeah, baby, Karma. I saw your, um, I saw your, ch your uh, super chat. Thank you so much for that. And the congrats on episode 200. So what'd y'all think of that video? What was the most important or biggest standout thing that you learned in that video? I think the biggest thing for me when I started learning about this structure 
was the fact that, well, story, in fact, good stories at least, have a structure. And we don't really pay attention to it, but when you really dive into the structure and how it relates to some of our favorite movies, some of our favorite books, some of our favorite television shows, some of our favorite stories that other podcasters and friends have had, celebrities even, it starts to become like the matrix. You're starting to see that this thing exists and that we can take advantage of this too, right? So <laughs> Remodel Media says, um, actually Frodo is a hobbit. Yes, this is true, but I think y'all get the idea, right? So we're taking storytelling to the next level here, right? Not 101, but 201. And so hopefully this hero's journey has helped you understand a little bit more about perhaps where you fit in. And you might be, and in fact, let me go to this screenshot here or this image here. This this is this is it here if you want to take a screenshot. And then again, I would definitely uh, recommend you rewatch this video if you'd like, or there's obviously a ton of literature and other videos about the hero's journey. But this juxtaposition between ordinary and special is so important. And then coming back to a new norm. And then as Matthew was saying here, we just do it again. And we just do it again. And I found that this is what has helped excel myself as a, as a person, personally, uh, de development wise, and also to inspire and motivate even others, right? Because I got laid off. And then I became a uh, entrepreneur. So that was my new ordinary world. But now I'm going into a new ordin ordinary world when I'm starting to speak on stages. And I've shared that story. And I pull out the hero's journey in how I share myself and how I've learned how to public speak, right? So let's pull this out. Hey, here I am, ordinary world. I'm an uh, I'm an entrepreneur. So let's kind of go through this together, right? This is a, a like another hero's journey within the hero's journey, right? Any of these things can be pulled out and turned into this, right? And can be displayed in a video, in a documentary, in a podcast, just in conversation. So hey, here I was as an architect, and in two thousand and 11, I was asked to speak on stage at FinCon. It was the very first FinCon. And I had forever said no to speaking on stages because I was so afraid. I didn't want to get up on stage. That's why I had a business online so I could hide behind my monitor and keyboard. Yet I was called to action by a friend. His name was Philip Taylor, right? I'm going to pop this up on here to help me and help you too. PT Money. He started this conference called FinCon and he asked me to come and speak on his stage. And I wanted to do this to help him start his new event because this was the inaugural year. So I decided that, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try and create a presentation. I'm very afraid and nervous about this, but I'm going to try it for you, PT. So I get some assistance. I get some assistance by reading books like Dale Carnegie's Stand and Deliver, Nancy Duarte's Resonate. I go all in on learning how to do this because I'm about to enter this new world of speaking on stage, something that, again, I was very, very afraid to do. In fact, and this is where we can start to add like statistics and things like that, the number one fear that people have, even more than dying, is public speaking. And I definitely fit into that statistic. So I get assistance. I then learn how to deliver a presentation. I create this presentation. And then two weeks before the event, PT calls me. He goes, hey, Pat, our closing keynote had to drop. May I ask you to deliver the closing keynote for our very first FinCon? So this is a way that within this story, I go from, okay, I'm going to be non-speaker to speaker, but now I'm going into a very, very dark place or a new special world, having to deliver a keynote on my very first presentation. So I lean, I lean into that story. When I tell this story, I often recap the present, the, the, the phone conversation that I have, right? So if I'm telling this story on stage or if I'm telling this in a conversation, I go, okay. And then two weeks before the event, get this, I get a phone call from PT and he goes, Pat, I know you're going to hate me for this, but I have a favor to ask you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is it, PT? I'm already nervous. And he goes, Pat, our closing keynote, Trent from Simple Dollar can't make the event anymore. Can I ask you to do the keynote? And then I go, yes. I'll do it for you. And I hang up and I start sweating bullets because not only was I afraid to speak in front of 25 people in a breakout session, but now I have to speak in front of 250 people on a keynote on my very first go. I wanted to curl up into a little ball right there. 
So again, leaning into that thing that creates that juxtaposition, the, the, the transition from ordinary world to special world, I lean into that even more when I tell the story, right? So here I am now, I'm going through trial and error, I'm practicing, I'm rehearsing, I'm messing up and all this stuff. And then I have to go to the event and I can't even talk to anybody because I'm so afraid, right? I'm so worried, I'm going over the uh, presentation in my head. In fact, one thing that I do that I learned later was a big mistake was I scripted out the entire thing. Thankfully, this was only a 20 minute presentation, but it was still 20 pages of stuff that I memorized because I was so afraid of getting up there and, and losing my train of thought. In fact, there were moments when it was very dark, this crisis part, right? Where in fact, I thought that, and this is literally what was going through my head, that people were going to throw tomatoes and vegetables at me on stage. Where they got these vegetables and tomatoes, I literally have no idea. I just, you know, you see that on television. I'm like, oh my gosh, people are going to be uh, upset at me. I'm, I'm going to ruin PT's pre uh, presentation and his entire conference. And I'm going to wake up uh, naked in a ditch somewhere. Like literally that's what was going through my head, right? So I scripted all this stuff out because I was so afraid. And then all of a sudden, uh, number seven here, I'm on, I'm on the stage and I'm delivering my presentation. I practiced it so much that I just had it memorized. And then if all of a sudden the presentation was over, it was so, sort of like in a flash. I didn't even realize what happened. There's an applause, the event ends. And as I'm getting off stage, I noticed this giant line of people who wanna to talk to me. I'd never been to a conference before. I didn't know that kind of normally happens, but here I was shaking hands and meeting everybody who said, great job, that was really helpful. That changed my perspective so much, thank you. And that's when I then returned into the new world and realized that, wow, this is something that I can do. And then I got really obsessed with it. <laughs> and I had this resolution like, wow, I am a speaker. Anybody can learn this skill. And here I was, I, I wanna improve. And then I kind of went through the cycle again. I went and then seeked out a presentation somewhere else at uh, Blog World Expo. I then hired a coach. I got an assistant, I paid an assistant. And then here I was again, trying new things. So that's just a micro example of another story of where I go through this sort of cycle, right? Think about the niche site duel or the food trucker website that I had that I publicly shared on the website. Hey, I'm gonna try and build a website that's gonna get to number one in Google. We'll see what happens. This is some of the best YouTube content where you go, hey, here's something that I wanna test and experiment with. Let's see what goes down. And then all the trial and errors as we go into this uh, special world, trying new things, slaying creatures, getting getting beaten down and then coming back out the other end with some new knowledge and with the case of the niche site duel having specific results in terms of google rankings as well as income coming in from these new websites that people were watching i was at, in fact creating this hero's journey live in front of everybody with that example Whew. okay sorry i just kind of had a moment there where we were kind of getting deep with all that kind of stuff so the other thing about this, and then I'd love to just brainstorm with some of you about some of the stories that you could perhaps tell. And again, I want you to think about internally about where you are on this journey in particular and how amazing the story will become once it comes full circle. You've also have gone through this circle many times before and you're on your own new circle now. Uh, also remember how you are pulling out these kinds of hero journeys for, with your audience. If you have a podcast, if you have a YouTube channel, if you have a blog, you can showcase the hero's journey of your own students. This will work out too. So case in point, episode 275 of the Smart Passive Income podcast, I invite three of my podcasting students on from Power Up Podcasting to come tell their story. Now, I don't have them come on the podcast to go, uh, hey, Pat, um, or I, I don't ask them questions like, hey, tell me why my course was awesome. No, I go, well, tell me what you were doing before you started your show and why starting a podcast was a call to action for you. What called you to start a podcast? So now here they are, they're telling their story and I'm asking them, okay, how did you, um, what, what were some of your first steps to, uh, cons to, to consider on this journey? And this is where they, without even asking, start mentioning my name, my course, et cetera. And then I go, okay, what were some of the big trials that you've had? What were the biggest challenges and struggles that you've had with your podcast. And there was a woman named Dr. B, who was one of these people who I invited on the show. She's over 60 years old and started a podcast. She wanted to help people learn how to deal with ADHD. And so she wanted to start a show, but being over 60, she was very afraid. 
her biggest challenge, her struggle, her demon was technology. And so through this conversation that we had on this podcast, again, my goal as interviewer is to go through this hero's journey and use questions to pull the pull this hero's journey out. Because sometimes when you ask people, oh, tell me about your story. Oh yeah, now I'm this. And they're kind of fast forwarding to 9, 10, and 11. And we haven't really dove into the special parts of the story where we get into three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, right? So we need to get into that situation when we're interviewing people. So anyway, Dr. B tells a story about how she finally was able to get her technology going and she started her podcast. And now she has a podcast that's listened to over 50 countries around the world. She even uh, made us all visualize this with her and said that she has a map in front of her computer where she pins a new country every time she gets a new person who listens in another country. And it just became this really special story that in this story, just like Donald Miller talks about in Story Brand, I am the guide. She's the Luke Skywalker or the Princess Leia. Princess Leia, probably. And, uh, well, yes, but the Luke Sky uh, Skywalker analogy is better because Yoda is the guide. And so I'm the Yoda in this story. And of course, when you hear this hero's journey, the Yoda becomes the, 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 the guy that everybody else wants too. So if you have a course, if you have a coaching program and whatnot, pull these stories out and interview people based on this hero's journey, once again, to set yourself up for success. Today's video is timely for me. Yes, thank you, Rudy. Thank you, everybody. Um, so the reason why, again, I wanted to talk about this, and we've talked about storytelling before, but I wanted to go deeper with you is because yesterday on episode 200, Chris Ducker, who was our uh, second guest yesterday, talked about the importance of storytelling and how it can completely help you entertain people. Even if you are not considered funny by yourself or humorous or entertaining. The stories itself, when it follows the sequence, will be entertaining, right? So this is how we can all-inclusive ins uh, inspire, motivate, educate, and entertain at the same time. A story without these things may still be motivational. It may still inspire and also educate, but it won't be entertaining. And it's this idea of this juxtaposition of where we once were to where we are now, that is the entertaining piece, the stories that are within there. I also, I also want you to consider like details when you're telling your stories. The more details you can add, the more it transports that viewer, that listener, that reader, subscriber into that moment with you. I love starting podcast episodes with a story, starting videos with a story because it transports those people into that situation and it transports them out of, hmm, I wonder if this video is worth watching or not because now they're thinking about the story, right? How y'all doing? Quick energy check from the chat. If you are enjoying this content, hook me up with a thumbs up down below, in the lower right-hand corner of this video. If you happen to have a chance to do that, that would be awesome. And if you're coming in late and you haven't yet done so, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and the bell notification icon. I do have another video coming out later today about the setup that I have here and I remember last night recording uh, four or five different intros for it, right? When you tell these stories online, especially on platforms like YouTube or on a podcast, not only do we have to tell the story in the way that we just learned with the hero's journey, but if you can have it relate to the person who is watching, whether through the way that you're telling the story or just straight up telling people this is why this matters to you, then that's gonna work out even better too. Right, so I'm wondering, would you guys like to see the hook that I have for the video that's coming out very soon? I can play this video for you, in fact. This is the video that is gonna be coming out um, legit like in a couple hours. I still have to create the metadata in the description for it and whatnot, but I can play this for you if you wanna hear it. And I, you'll hear me say literally how this can help the viewer, right? So, so important. So don't forget when you're telling these stories, especially in an online basis, we still need to hook people in. Sometimes when we start telling stories, we just kind of go right into the story part and just like, oh, it was a beautiful day in Kansas. Or actually, it was a very gray day in Kansas. And my aunt and uncle were um, very mean. And then all of a sudden this tornado came and then I entered this world and I squished this uh, witch and then this like other witch came but this was like a nice pretty witch and there were all these like little people around me and like okay but what's the point of this story so especially online 
tell people the point of the story. When you're in conversation or perhaps are just already on an interview on another person's podcast, then you can kind of just dive into it. But we need a hook. We need a reason, right? So let me play this hook for you from the video that's coming out later today. And again, this is just about the equipment that I use in my office to get these really nice live streams. Hey, what's up? It's Pat here in the home studio, and I wanna show you how to up-level your video presence online because video is becoming more and more important, whether that's live streams, your Zoom calls, of course, and even virtual presentations that you might be offering because I want you to be able to impress people. And this is something that I've discovered after experimentation with so many different things. I wanna give you a behind the scenes tour of all my equipment and all the things that I use because you can do some fun things like this. So instead of this angle right here, I can just push a button and legit while live, even on a Zoom call, you can go to here. Or maybe you wanna show people a little bit more context on where you're filming at. Well, let's go to the back view Hello over there. I'm gonna share with you all the video equipment that I'm using as well as the audio. And of course, lighting is really important too. And some of the fun little tricks that you can do with video like, hey, a little thank you. Thank you so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And no, I'm not adding this in post. I'm doing this on the fly. Plus you can do some fun things like this. Imagine you're presenting live. People are starting to fall asleep and then you go, you give them that pattern interrupt. I wanna show you how to do that and more here in this video. So make sure you stick around because I got a lot to cover. We're gonna go on a tour. All right, so to start, all right, so that was the hook. And one thing I want you to pay attention to is how often I say the word you or your, right? You or your, the idea that, hey, this is a video that will help you. I even, in fact, explicitly say, I want you to impress people. And that ties into a very, very human want, the want and sense of belonging. So I'm, I'm tapping into that here. And it's just, a, it's just a one minute sort of intro and the hook is really right at the start but I wanted to share with you how I'm hopefully gonna get people to stay watching this 20 minute video, right? This is a long video, 21 minutes. And so I really wanted to, number one, nail why this is important for people to watch and what they can do, how they'll stand out and impress others. I'm, I cast a wide net here, Zoom calls, live presentations and live streams. So no matter how you go live, I want you to sort of be able to do this and I offer an open loop. Hey, I'm gonna show you this fun trick, boom, surprise, which nobody really sees on a live stream like that before, right? So in case you're asleep, that kind of thing. And you gotta get the arms in there too, because that is, uh, it would be weird if I was just like. That'd be weird. That was a weird face. Yes, and I do put the head blowing up and all that stuff too, just like, how is it, where's this button here? I even make a joke about it because I'm off centered and then I go back in. But anyway, what does this have to do with story? This has to do with the fact that when you're online creating content and the attention pan is so small, attention pan, attention span, we need to really hone in on these hooks. So this is sort of like an addition to the hero's journey because the hero's journey takes time, but we need to hook people in in the beginning so that they will take the time, right? If that makes sense. So just a little bit of unpacking for you in terms of this video that's coming out later today. I'm hoping it does well. I've been not doing so well with my pre-recorded YouTube videos lately in terms of just reach, but I'm trying to get better. And uh, oh my gosh, I have to tell you, there was a video that Mr. Beast came out with yesterday. St like talk about a way to bring the story full circle. So Mr. Beast, if you don't know who Mr. Beast is, this is actually perfect for this video here. So Mr. Beast is a YouTuber who is exploding. I bought this entire- So what's really interesting about Mr. Beast is he, <laughs> he literally, at all, every dollar he makes on his videos, he puts back into his videos. And he'll get millions of views. I mean, this, this video that came out a month ago is 39,000 views. And he's, he's up leveling, he's spending tons of money and just giving it away to people. It's pretty amazing. He's just this young 20 year old guy from North Carolina, I think. Look at this, 44, million subscribers, 44 million subscribers. He does these really fun challenges. My kids and I, we love watching him. I met him in person uh, last year, in fact, at Vid Summit, and super nice guy, very humble, in fact. he. I watched him answer a bunch of questions from people who were in line to interview him before I got to talk to him. And he was just like, you know, I don't know everything. I'm just trying really hard. Like, he, he, he wasn't big headed at all. It actually really surprised me. But he came out with a video yesterday that he scheduled to publish 
five years ago. Imagine today you schedule a video to go live five years from now, five years from now. He uploaded this video five years ago saying, hi me in five years. And I wanna play this two minute video for you. Maybe not all of it, but it really teaches a lesson here because uh, it really shows you how much he's grown since. Again, five years ago, he, he hit schedule. He uploaded this video to go live on this date. So today is October 4th and I'm setting this video to go public in five years. So this was, this was yesterday, but five years ago yesterday, he published this video on his channel. At the time I'm recording this video, I have 8,000 subscribers and 1.8 million views. So whenever you see this, compare these numbers to whatever I have when you watch this. What's up guys? It's currently October 4th, 2015. Yes, I'm probably like a freaking grown man when you see this. I'm still in high school right now and, whoa, this camera's tilted. When you see this, I'm actually going to be in, uh, I'm not even going to be in college. I mean, this is going to be after college. Wow, dude, this is going to be crazy. It's 2015 for me right now. Dude, what if I'm dead? Dude, if I'm, ooh, that'd be weird. That'd be so weird. Rip. That would, that would, dude, that'd be really weird. But, so, uh, let's see. Ten, dude, if I don't have a million subscribers when you see this video, my entire life has been a failure. I hope I have a million subs. I better have a million subscribers when you guys see this. <sighs> Dude, that'd be... Anyway, he goes on, he literally says the same thing over and over again here, but pretty amazing to see where he was five years ago. 8,000 subs with now 44 million subscribers. Um, the one thing I'll say is he was just like, you know what, if I don't have a million subscribers, I'll consider my life a failure. That's the only thing I would sort of disagree with in terms of, well, you don't need large numbers to do some really amazing things. But he's saying that for himself because he had goals. When I talked to him a little bit and saw him on stage, he was so determined to make this work, creating hundreds of really crappy videos until he found his voice, until he found the rhythm. And he started to gain a lot of momentum uh, over the last couple of years. And this year alone just is, is completely blowing up, um, completely exploding. And now he's created a separate channel called Mr. Beast Gaming and all this all this kind of stuff. But really amazing. Like, what if you scheduled a video five years from now today and shared your goals with yourself? I mean, I don't know if this is something that he thought about a lot, the fact that this video is scheduled, but I can imagine it, at least for myself, being a, a, an amazing driver, right? An amazing, like, wow, uh, kind of a ticking time bomb, if you will, for, wow, I, well, I better get my stuff together by then or else this video is going to not age very well. This video obviously aged very well. So really cool and um, pretty amazing, in fact. Uh, and, and even just like, you know, his video quality is not so great and his, his voice, his confidence level, you can tell is very low, yet I know that he put in the effort and worked really hard. When everybody else was doing other things, partying, going out, he was making YouTube videos. And um, just it's, it's really inspiring. Um, it's also easy when we play this comparison game to get very deflated. You might be like, oh my gosh, how did this guy who had less subscribers than me, all of a sudden within five years, I've been around for longer, he has 44 million views now, I must not be good enough. And that's not the case. Everybody's on a different timeline. I think the big lesson here, and you've heard me say this before, is we can't play the comparison game with others like Mr. Beast. He's in his own space. He has his own voice. He has his own niche. We have our own space. We have our own voice. We're ha we have our own niche. But as Mr. Beast is doing here, he's comparing himself to his earlier self. We need to do the same thing. We need to compare ourselves to our earlier self. How are you getting better from yesterday? How are you getting better from how you were a week ago, a month ago? a year ago, five years ago, right? Dogs are the best friends. Thanks for sharing that as well. We all need to have perspective for sure. Time will pass either way. So we either make the most of it or we don't. I am and will continue to do. He has championed through. You can watch his older videos to learn about it. Oh, I didn't even know that. So he's he's fought through this and um, that's pretty amazing. So uh, really proud of Mr. Beast and what he's doing. And he's, he's just hilarious and 
it's just so inter like he's nailed the formula for what works on YouTube to get people to stick and watch like his retention rate on his videos, I'm guessing are like 95% guaranteed. It's just insane. And he's just taken all the, like he, he, he has said that every dollar he makes on his YouTube channel, he's going to put back into his videos. And so he just keeps up leveling. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, I was very surprised to see how humble he was and how friendly his crew is. I mean, they, that there's these different characters like Chandler and other people that he sort of is in his, his like his boys, as he calls them. Um, really, really inspiring. So uh, let's see. Jamin says, Jim Carrey wrote himself a $10 million check in 1985 and dated it for 1995. Kept it in his wallet in 1995. He got the Dumb and Dumber gig. Wow, that's crazy. Anything Cameron says, so sad I couldn't make yesterday's stream. How was it? On the bright side, I missed it because I was hired to uh, photograph a wedding. Hey, congrats. That's awesome. Well done. Um, you missed a lot of fun stuff, but it's obviously available as a replay, and you're here on 201, which is what matters right now. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. Well done. Always good a chance uh, to have a chance to be here and get the gems in my leadership journey. Awesome. Yeah, today we're talking about storytelling again. Cool. Sorry, I just have Mr. Beast like staring at me here. I'm gonna go back to Google or something because he's just staring at me. Okay, so this this hero's journey, we can we can create this sort of uh, story about kind of almost anything. I think it's really important to understand that a lot of the even smaller things that might happen within our daily life that may not seem too much of a big deal, they can become a great story in and of itself, right? So even just the story of anything cameras here. It was like, you know, I had to miss something really important, but I missed it because I got this really amazing gig. So you had plans to come and watch the stream. And then all of a sudden you get called to action to go and film this wedding. And although you hated missing episode 200, you gained a new client and you were able to learn from that and share that and inspire all of us. So there's a little moment, a little story. I have had things happen in my life where I, when I think about it a little bit more deeply, it really becomes a case of, wow, okay, well, huh. This is actually something I could use as a story. Case in point, there was a moment when, uh, actually, let me go to this view here. And then when, when, whenever I'm telling stories here on the stream, I like to butter up a little bit and add a little bit more flavor, right? Because butter equals flavor for sure. So I'll put the music on, of course. I'll go to this camera. Again, just a way to emphasize that this is a story versus if I go here, I'm like teaching. And I can tell stories here too. But if I, if, if I want to change it up, especially in this camera setup that I have available, I can change the angle, I can change the music and add some more flavor to have people go, oh, story time, okay. I'm gonna sit down and 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 sort of listen at this point, right? So let's tell the story that I was about to tell. So this is a story about something that happened that seemed sort of regular, but then got uh, fine-tuned to become a lesson that was actually relatable to what I teach, right? So the story is about a time when my son asked me to play, when Keone asked to play the iPad in the car. I was about to go get lunch. He's like, can I come with you? And I was like, sure. And he said, okay, well, can I bring the iPad? And my wife and I, we always say no. We always say no to him bringing the iPad in the car because we want those times in the car to be conversational. We don't want him to just escape. We want him to be a part of the conversation and sort of engage with him. A car is an amazing place to have conversations with your kid for sure. So we always say no, but I wanted to test him. I wanted to see how he would react if I said this, and this is exactly what I said. I said, okay, well, I'll let you bring it in the car if you can convince me why you should, right? So I said, okay, well, you know, tell me, why should I let you play the iPad in the car? So I, I, I hear him pause because he's really excited. He's really stoked on the fact that he has a chance, but he has to say the right words, right? So he's thinking, he's like, well, I really like playing Minecraft and I want to get better at it. And I think if I had more time to play it, I'd get better. And I said, okay, well, that doesn't help me. So right now it's a no. You need to tell me why I should let you play this in the car. And he goes over it again. And it's like another uh, very me sort of answer, right? Well, you know, I'm just about to learn how to create this chicken farm. And it's really cool because when I uh, am doing other things, I can still have chickens and feathers being made. And I said, okay, well, that's kind of cool, but it still doesn't convince me. I need you to tell me why it helps me. Right, and then I add a joke in here in this story. And again, I didn't add this joke. This this joke kind of happened, but I didn't realize it was a joke. 
And I kind of lean into this as well, because when you tell these stories, you find moments within this story that you can actually um, focus on. You can actually dig a little bit deeper into. So I go another example. I go, okay, well, I tell him, sell it to me. Sell me on the iPad. And then he goes, you want me to sell you your own iPad? So there's a little humor in there. That actually didn't happen in real life. But when I was telling the story on stage, I wanted to add a little bit more humor again to lean into this a little bit more. So I, sh I share that and then I go, okay, this is your last chance, County. You have to tell me why would it make sense for me, the driver of this car, your dad, to say yes, how does this benefit me? And I, I hear his gears turning and he's like, oh, okay, well, if I play video games in the car, I won't be a distraction for you when driving. And I was like, oh, okay, you're getting it, you're getting it, but still no. And he goes, I, I say, okay, you have one last chance. And he goes, well, if I learn how to play mine, or actually the way he started was, well, you you were an architect before, right, dad? And I go, yes, what does that have to do with anything? And he's like, well, if you let me play Minecraft, I can learn how to become a better uh, builder and an architect, and then I can teach you some of those things later. And I was like, yes. Like my heart was pumping because that was such a beautiful answer because he was trying to consider how playing Minecraft would benefit me. And it got him to go, oh, how can I teach this to my dad? And I love that answer. And so we let him play with the iPad in the car that day. The next day we go somewhere and he's like, can I bring the iPad in the car? And we said, no. And he's like, using the same position. I'm like, no, it was, that was just a one-time situation, right? So anyway, that story relates to knowing your audience, right? And that was just a little moment that was probably a three minute exchange in my day going to lunch. But I pull out that story, I put it in my story bank. Story bank is an Evernote folder that I have with all different kinds of stories, things that happen in my daily life that are just different. I put in there and I go, okay, well, how might I, how might I take this and actually turn it into the story with a beginning, a middle and an end, right? This is almost a hero's journey for Kaoni. Right, ordinary world, can't play with the iPad. Call the action, hey, tell me why you should be playing with this iPad in the car, right? Different world, now you are forced to think about how to actually say the right words to impress your dad. Sell it to me. And then treasure, coming out on the other end. Yes, you got the words right, know who your audience is. New ordinary world, learning about the idea and the lessons of when you are trying to get people to tell you, or when, when you want from something from somebody, Help them first, serve first, try to understand that, right? So how, like a little three minute conversation in my day with my kid turned into this beautiful lesson with in fact a hero's journey within it. These things exist for all of us. And I wanted to share that story with you just to show you how something so minuscule, so small can actually turn itself into something that can actually be used on stage. And I told that story on stage at Chris Tucker's event two years ago in London. And I had one of the biggest applauses I've had after the punchline. And the punchline was when Keone said, well, hey, dad, you're an architect, right? Well, maybe if I learn how to play Minecraft better, I can teach you how to become a better architect too. And I remember vividly. And then like Chris said, if you're telling these stories on stage and you have an audience with you, allow them to finish laughing, allow them to finish clapping. And I think that was a 15, 20 second uproar when I told that story. And it perfectly blended into my lessons about knowing who your audience is and speaking to them and coming from a place of serving first, right? So hopefully that made sense. Chat, sorry I haven't been engaged with you specifically today, but hopefully that, yeah, okay, cool. Bernadette teaches music, what's up? Thank you for being here. Chris says, if you want a fun challenge, pick some random task in a day and turn it into a story. It helps you focus on your structure. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. You know, I could tell the story about last week when I cracked my LCD screen on my new computer and immediately fell into this sort of dark place of, oh my gosh, like all my stuff is lost. What am I going to do? And I think we can all relate to when we've had tech issues and such and such. So I go to a guide, Jess. My lovely Jess, she helps me think through the idea that, okay, I can get a temporary computer that I can use in the meantime while we go get this thing repaired. So now I'm in this new world 
trying to update this brand new computer to the standard that I had on my old one with all my settings and all this stuff. And it took a couple hours, but I finally got it done. And in fact, I came out on the other side even better because that's what created this angle right here. This angle up here wouldn't have happened. These sorts of random GIFs that pop up on the screen wouldn't have happened unless that moment happened and I had a new computer and I had a blank slate to start with. The big lesson there is sometimes we need a reset. Sometimes maybe we should actually delete our entire computer so we can come back and come back even stronger. I don't think we should delete our entire computer, but you get the idea. Sometimes we need to falter through these, these moments, fault through these moments. I don't know if that's the right expression, but sometimes we need to be challenged in order to progress even further. And I was getting into a moment of complacency with my old setup that I didn't even consider how I might be able to make it better. It wasn't until my computer failed and so now there's a blessing in disguise, right? So AV Pierce says, would you talk about your upcoming webinar when you get a moment? Yeah, I'd love to talk about that right now. You know, as you know, podcasting has completely changed my life. I've helped thousands of students start their businesses, start their audiences, scale their ex existing business with podcasting. And in tomorrow's webinar, you might've gotten an email for it if in fact you are on my list. Uh, I'm gonna be teaching uh, a number of strategies to help you get started on your journey with podcasting so that you can get through a lot of those bigger challenges that people have mentally and technically so that you can get started much quicker and be on a course to success from there. Chris says, nailed it, Pat, thank you. What's up, Asma, good to see you here. Dr. Severin Bryan, thank you for joining me. Danny says, I tell stories all the time when I start working with new clients. I use past experiences with past clients to teach new clients about different parts of the process for buying and selling homes. Nice, right? And if you have, specifically a story bank, you can, if you're gonna be using these stories in your selling process, you can categorize these stories based on the different objections. And this is something I learned from Stu McLaren. He has a story bank, an Excel file, where he knows the exact objections that different people have had before getting into his program. Because now he can tell those same stories. When a person has the same object objection, he'll go, oh, well, that's just like Jenny from Tennessee. She also had an online course and wanted to create a membership website and didn't know how to do it, but here's how she managed it. And that's so much better to, thank you, Danny, for sharing this. That's so much better in terms of what you should be talking about in, for, for selling, using another person who you've helped already because they're an example of what can happen versus you just going, oh, well, you know, that's actually really possible. Let me tell you why this will work for you. No, 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 let me give you an example of how this worked for somebody else, right? Woo, awesome. We dove really deep into storytelling. This is Storytelling 201. This is how, if you ever wanna come back to this particular video, you will always remember this because it wasn't the 101 version of storytelling, it was 201. On what episode? Yeah, episode 201, baby. Wasn't planned, but thank you all for yesterday and episode 200. That inspired this particular chat here today and we're gonna go even further. I hope it was fun also to bring in some outside content in here watching uh, Matthew's uh, hero's journey as well as the Mr. Beast video. Um, I think it worked out perfectly. So what a beautiful episode today. Thank you so much for today. Let's continue to hone in on our uh, storytelling skills. The best way to become a better storyteller is to what? Just tell more stories. Consciously see what you can do each time you tell a story, even at the dinner table even with your kids, even with your spouse, just consciously go, okay, I'm gonna tell this story and I'm gonna use these tactics that I learned today. And I promise you, you're gonna get better results. You might fumble every once in a while, but that's okay. Because guess what? That's part of the hero's journey. Thank you all so much for coming in today. I appreciate you. Uh, here we are, 99 episodes left till episode 300. <laughs> um, I should create the waiting room for that like right now and then just have loads of people just sort of like a like a dam flooded and then boom, the floodgates open. Uh, that would be hilarious. Whew. Great time, everybody. Tell more stories. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's time will be sort of fluctuating a lot lately because of certain meetings and such. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to start at 9 a.m. Pacific, so a half hour early. Actually, do you like the 8.30 hour? Because the 8.30, no, it's actually better tomorrow at 9 a.m. <laughs> cool. 
let, let, or, let, let's start at 8.30 a.m. Same time as, as uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It would be more helpful for April if I start at 9. Yeah, tomorrow will be 9. 9 a.m. Pacific. Sorry, but, sorry, chat. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, and we'll go from there. Thank you all so much, everybody. I appreciate you, and um, we'll go from there. Peace out, yo. I appreciate you, and as always, Team Flynn for the win. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Thanks, Yo. I'll keep you posted again. You'll see the times when I create the rooms earlier on. Um, apologize for the, just ever since school started, it's been weird. So anyway, thank you again so much. I appreciate you. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern tomorrow. Peace out, y'all. I love you. Bruh.